Hello there. Okay. Well, it's an exciting day. We've got uh, so many things planned today, and I see so many great faces of people that I uh, love and that we have had since the beginning of our uh, High Heels and High Places, which ended up being Inspire, a mentoring, a women's mentoring group. But some of you have been around for a very long time, and I'm so excited today. And as always, we always have, you know, Laura, which helps us do uh, Inspire. She's the one that helps do our uh, marketing part. And, and it's actually her husband helps a lot too. And it's, it's wonderful to have somebody so wonderful that, you know, can step out and, and make things happen. Today, we are really, uh, I just, I don't even know how to explain how excited I am about having Nora here because she's just such a wonderful, wonderful speaker and a wonderful mentor for women. And today we, uh, Nora, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Uh, besides how beautiful she is, she, we all know that she is so sweet too. But Nora Gara is the National Affordable Lending Manager in the Single Family Mission and Client Engagement Team in the Single Family Organization, known as Freddie Mac. The Affordable Lending Team is committed to ensuring Freddie Mac has the offerings to support responsible lending and provide sustainable ownership and to improve access to credit for all borrowers. Nora supports the sales and lending partners to develop and execute seller plans for meeting uh, affordable housing, community outreach, and CRA goals. She analyzes market data to identify trade opportunities and develop uh, strategic direction from market information. She is a veteran uh, for 25 years in the mortgage industry, which, you know, um, she has educated herself and moved on up to where she is in leadership position now, and it's very exciting. Uh, she's leadership in sales, origination, production, and sourcing in a variety of areas, including multi, multi cultural and low to moderate income segments. Nora recently received the Latino Award, Leadership Award in 2023 from Diversity Journal in honor of her tireless advocacy for Latino housing equity and her work in the community to improve the financial literacy, uh, literacy of Latino high school and university students nationwide. She is just, she does work tirelessly. She works around the clock and she is just a wonderful person for us to have on here today. I will tell you that Nora, not only beside being intelligent, a great speaker, very educated in the mortgage industry and a powerful woman and a mentor to many women already. And I'm so glad that she's here today to share our Inspire a Women's Mentoring Group session today. So uh, I think we have a little video that we're gonna watch first and Brandy's gonna go ahead and put that on for us to bring Nora Gara in. Okay, there we go. When I was 15 years old, my mom handed me the phone and she basically asked me, translate for me, something's going on with the bank. And as I was doing that, I started understanding, I was negotiating an exit strategy on our home. It was being foreclosed. My mom is actually from Guadalajara, Mexico. And my family wanted that American dream. They wanted, you know, to purchase a home, to come to America and uh, have a little piece of land, you know, that was really ours. Losing my, you know, middle class childhood home that I had grown up in was the big catalyst for me to come to the housing industry. Coming to Freddie Mac, um, I knew that their mission aligned with mine. And really my story is that Freddie Mac story. It's that customer that I help. I look at um, immigrants into America and I see their hard struggles. I know that they want a better future in this country. Working at a company where you're passionate about what you do really equates a success story. For more information on careers at Freddie Mac, visit careers.freddymac.com. Linda, Nam, 
members. Thank you guys so very much. Listen, I didn't even have to prepare for today's presentation. Usually I've got data and analytics and all these amazing slides to present, but you know, as you heard, kind of my voice breaking up in that video, you know, this is such a, a passionate topic for me and um, supporting women. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you. I, I don't know what's more of my passion, supporting women in our industry or getting these first time home buyers into homes. Because can I tell you, I feel like they both align. The more that we support each other, you know, it's, it's really kind of that catalyst of what brings us together and helps, um, you know, so many different people of so many backgrounds. Now, I do have to say, um, I was hearing you say 25 years in the housing industry, and I'm like, oh, I might need to change that because it really dates me. But um, quickly, let's briefly talk about my journey. You know, what did it take? Can I tell you? I was one of you. I am one of you. Um, you know, every time I, I travel and I present on behalf of um, NAM and with my NAM partners, you know, I'm so proud to always connect with all of these amazing women brokers, you know, women who work for brokers. And, um, you know, I feel that I share my story with them. Um, as you saw in the video, there was a big aha behind you know, why am I so passionate about supporting women, mentoring women, but also, you know, advancing uh, first time home buyers into housing. Um, and as you heard, my goodness, I lost my childhood home. It was such a tragedy. And I remember, you know, I was unfortunately, because I was born in Mexico, I was the head English speaker in my home. Um, in Spanish, we tend to call us little attorneys. Um, and uh, I remember crying so much that night and telling my mom in Spanish, like, you know, I need in the future, I'm going to help people stay in their homes. And my mom was like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, can you imagine <laughs> you guys? I, I don't know what made me say that. But, um, you know, as I've progressed in my career, my mom has joined me, you know, in, in different uh, areas when I've received awards. And um, she always tells everybody, you know, Nora always said when she grew up, she was going to help people stay in their homes. And, you know, I, I pride myself in just being so passionate about sustainability. So, Brandy, are we able to maybe pull up that slide um, and share it just so that I can talk a little bit about that? Um, so back to me, my career, how do I support women? What do I do? Um, let me tell you, I, you know, as we all know, let me, let me first connect with you. You guys, this is such a hard industry for women. Um, you know, it's such a male dominated industry. And, you know, I remember thinking, when I was younger and started in subprime, if you've ever seen any of my presentations, the first thing I say is, you know, I came into the industry at a time when, oh my gosh, can I tell you, I know everyone says right now, oh, you know, our housing economy, it's, it's so challenging. No, guys, I came in at, I was a subprime underwriter at 13, I remember 13 to 19% at one point, um, I was underwriting transactions manually. That should tell you how old I am. Um, no computers. It was all on our amazing HP, which I'll pull out right now. <laughs> it's at my desk still. Same one. Um, and I remember, you guys, number one, I was the only woman, young woman, impressionable. Um, I worked with a team of all men underwriters who were seasoned. I mean, these guys had been in the industry for so long. But can I tell you, I loved numbers. I loved math. I remember all of this just made so much sense to me. And I still remembered I wanted to help so many buyers get into homes. That was my thing. Um, subprime buyers, unfortunately, at the time were mostly first time home buyers that look like me. So I connected very well and I found my niche. But can I tell you, I started raising my hand and um, looking for mentors. I was like, wow, I need, you know, I need some direction. This is such a tough industry. Everyone was pretty much male at the time. Um, I did connect with a female manager and uh, 
can I tell you years later, she's retired. She's a great friend of mine. Her name is Cindy Key. Um, she has followed my journey and she always sends me these amazing messages saying, Nora, back then my maiden last name. And she's like, I remember you were so gung ho. You, you supported women. You, you know, just wanted to really have kind of, um, an advocate, an ally, or someone to say, hey, Nora, do this or don't do that. And can I tell you, I made so many mistakes. Let's talk about the mistakes. I remember one of her biggest lessons was you have to be kind to yourself. You have to be so gentle with how you talk to yourself. This industry is going to, I remember her saying, chew you up and spit you out rather quickly. You're going to be overlooked for so many promotions. You're going to have to you know, work twice or three times as harder. And I hate to say this, and I'm not saying this, but this is an all women group and we are, we are each other's uh, allies, but I used to have to work so much harder than men to stand out. And um, I remember, you know, I, I kind of didn't connect with you know, the, and most of you that have been in the industry for a very long time with the brutal notion of negotiation, you know, we were always negotiating, um, you know, women brokers were so tough. And I remember thinking, my gosh, you know, I need to be this tough. So you guys, my negotiation skills were rather sharky or rather brutal and brute, but I got the objective done. And, uh, let me tell you, years later, I was able to find myself again and finesse my skills. Um, you know, I think when you're young, you're so impressionable. Um, your heart is always in the right place, but you've got to somehow advance. You've got to get those loans closed. You've got to, um, you know, really just progress. Um, so with that, I picked up some really unhealthy habits. Um, but can I tell you somewhere in there, my passion for supporting women and mentoring women who were newer to the industry or reported to me um, after becoming a subprime underwriter, I remember thinking, oh, yeah, I don't like these type of loans. I need to go work uh, for a bank. Um, I was actually there was a big headhunter at the time. Um, who came and was, you know, bugging me for a very long time. Wells Fargo was actually launching an emerging markets division. By the way, this is so innovative back then. Um, nobody was working on emerging markets. That turns out to be affordable, you know, diverse loans. And um, there was a pilot program at Wells Fargo and they asked me to manage that program and um, manage a team of underwriters, processors, and funders. And I remember thinking, absolutely, I want to be a leader you know, this is, I think this is my calling. Um, I do have to say, my gosh, you know, this amazing team did such great work. Um, you know, I loved supporting sales and originators. I think that's always been my thing. I have the soft heart for, you know, supporting and helping them get through that loan challenge. And I'm I was really great at structuring transactions. From there, my executive leadership team at Wells Fargo said, you know what, you're really great in sales. And you guys, by then I had never sold a loan in my life. I just love putting transactions together. And they're like, we are going to assign you to a very important account. You're going to come out, you're going to become a loan officer. And I remember being scared to death. And, you know, at the time I was like grabbing my husband and saying, oh my God, gosh, I'm so scared. I, I'm not going to be able to do this. And he's like, you're such a people person. You're awesome at what you do. You could totally do this. So I supported Marty Rodriguez, the number one Century 21 agent, you guys in the world. She was a tough cookie. She still is, but she's also a dear friend of mine now, which she just celebrated 50 years in the industry. And I did this big, she called me and asked me to moderate a huge event for her. And it was full circle. And she kept saying, Nora, I'm so proud of you. And I'm proud of her. She's a legend. And can I tell you, I learned so many amazing, valuable lessons. I finally found that mentor, number one, that looked like me. Number two, a female driver. You guys, she was closing like 430 buyer side transactions as an agent. She had, you know, she was guiding me through my career. She was giving me phenomenal advice. And I was seeing her get, you know, promoted and to the next level and broker owner. And um, I remember one day she just said, you know, 
listen, you're so great at this. You're making a ton of money, but you're bigger than this. And I knew that. I knew that deep down inside. You know what? It's not a challenge for me. And can I tell you, forget it. When there is no challenge, I get bored rather quickly. So I'm like, what's on? What's the next thing? I need to continue to educate myself. Number two, I was always so coachable. I was very open to feedback, to coaching. Can I tell you, sometimes it's tough hearing feedback. I get it. There's sometimes that I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I needed it. You know, I needed it. That negotiation, I needed to really finesse negotiations, my negotiation skills. I needed to build a bridge. I needed to make sure that I left every negotiation transaction feeling great, but my opponent feeling great as well. I didn't have to go in and, you know, be that shark that I was taught to be at such a young age. That was maybe male negotiation. I needed finessing. I needed women negotiation skills. So I attended USC, um, actually negotiation, UCSD, um, Rady School of Business, um, had this amazing uh, women in negotiation course. And can I tell you, you guys, I found myself, I think I lost myself for a little bit, just, you know, that male, uh, it, it almost was like I was leading as a male in our industry. Um, I remember a lot of times I had to make some tough decisions, you know, let people go, unfortunately, due to P&Ls. I mean, you guys get this, you're, you're brokers. And I didn't feel great about it all, you know. And I said, you know, I'm not mentoring as many women as I want to. You know, there was so much that was missing. So that was my first step is I started just improving my skills. And I said, you know what, if anything, I'm going to set myself apart by being such a dominant leader for women and my craft. So I really cleaned up the negotiation. <laughs> I started negotiating and feeling great about it. I picked, up, I picked up so many amazing skills. And I was actually taught by Dr. Yasmin Davids, um, a renowned, I, I believe she's the number one world a uh, Latina a negotiator. She actually goes to Latin American countries where it's dominant for men to be negotiating and she really does a phenomenal job. And then I joined her USC course, um, multi, uh, Multicultural Women's Executive Leadership Program. And uh, it was a six month, very aggressive course. And it just taught me how to be an effective woman leader. And uh, I ended up winning, winning her top, very prestigious award. It's called Courage and Leadership. I have to tell you the minute I won that award, I just felt like a whole nother woman. And she taught me your passion is mentoring younger women. You need to um, you know, advance yourself, but pull women with you. That's your heart. That's your passion. You know, besides, um, you know, really moving the needle on home ownership, this is your thing. So you guys, I took it upon myself. Five young millennial mentors reached out to me immediately from graduating that program in all different sectors. And uh, all of a sudden I had this little group and I started, you know, really mentoring them well. Uh, a, I'm so proud to say my first group, five, all five either got brand new jobs or got promotions. I helped negotiate their pay. When I say negotiate their pay, we got them sign on bonuses. We negotiated every salary. We negotiated every bonus. I mean, we negotiated where we went back four or five times. Like you don't negotiate once you negotiate twice. You, I, I remember when I got to Freddie Mac, I negotiated so many times that they were probably like, go away, lady. <laughs> I was negotiating for my life. But can I tell you, as women, we leave money on the table. Um, in transactions, you leave money on the table. It, you know, there's data and analytics behind this, and I'm huge on data and analytics. Um, I also was super empathetic. There's so many, you know, during our careers, but also our personal lives. You guys, I'm a mom of three. My husband has such a thriving career. I feel like I don't support him as much as I should because he's always my cheerleader. He's like, you know, Nora, you're so amazing. You're so this, you're so that. I travel the country. I'm hardly ever home. My, I'm so grateful. <laughs> my children are thriving. Nobody has died so far. <laughs> And I say that jokingly, okay? Everybody is doing phenomenal. We have one in college, um, two in sports, one in high school, one in elementary school. But can I tell you, I 
it just, I feel so fulfilled now. Um, you know, every time I receive an award, you know, I won this diversity journal award and it was phenomenal for my Freddie Mac leaders to recognize me and to see the work that I was doing at work with Freddie Mac, but also, you know what, mentoring these women, um, besides mentoring these women, I started reaching out to my own community. And I thought, you know what, I am out teaching financial literacy to our housing industry. But what about our children? Um, so I started partnering with the Puente program uh, in California. And uh, I started teaching financial literacy to high school and college students. And can I tell you, I remember um, being a first you know, being an immigrant, not even first generation, being an immigrant, um, I had to learn, you know, mortgage jargon to help negotiate, you know, saving our home. But also I had to learn about banking. I, my mom, you know, unfortunately, our countries of origin in Mexico, it's so different. We are in a capitalist economy here in America, and it didn't look like that for me. I, I couldn't turn around and ask my mom, hey, can you have help me balance a checkbook. I mean, she was doing it, but it wasn't like she was guiding me through that. So I had to teach myself financial literacy. And I remember I was being so, so careful with credit. And now my passion is also, you know, teaching um, our, our next generation about financial literacy so they can buy a home. Um, with that, I'm going to move forward in my career. I actually was very successful in uh, sales um, and uh, a whole bunch of mortgage brokers and lenders started recruiting me. So um, I actually landed an area sales manager position running a territory in LA uh, with Bay, Bay Equity Home Loans. And uh, gosh, they were so good to me. And I loved it there. I ran a whole bunch of sales branches here in LA and um, really just thrived. Something was still missing there though. And uh, one day I was doing a presentation and uh, I remember Freddie Mac started calling me, you know, and saying that there's an opportunity for an affordable lending manager. They describe that opportunity. And I kid you not, have you guys ever heard, you know, like the angel sing and you were like, what? This is it. This is what I've been looking for all along. I get to learn about data and statistics, which I was always so fascinated about. You get to connect with amazing clients. You get to work with your entire industry. You get to travel the country and really make an impact in so many amazing places. You get to support amazing organizations like NAM. I can't tell you enough. I think I say this to Valerie, you know, who's a woman leader. And I'm so proud, you know, to say I support an organization where a woman can be president and a woman is president in the mortgage industry. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where you feel fulfilled, you feel full circle. But can I tell you, my goals are so aggressive. You guys, I am not done and neither should you. Um, you know, I'm so coachable. Remember that number one, coach be coachable, be, be ready for next level, um, educate yourself. I am forever a student. If I didn't mention it yet, my, my traveling partners, Valerie and Kim Berno, when we go out and do these Freddie Mac road shows, you guys, I'm a full-time student at Purdue. Don't ask me how I do it. Um, thank goodness I'm on the Dean's list, which means I'm above a 4.0, but I have no time for anything. I have zero social life right now. My children and my husband are my social life. Um, but I'm, I'm always learning. I'm forever learning. That's right. Linda is a past president. And uh, Linda remembers, I actually met her when she was a president. And I went and I spoke at Focus in um, Orlando. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. And that's kind of how we partnered up and became great friends. Um, just remember, you know, as you advance or as you feel fulfilled, we have to support each other as women. We have to be kind to each other. You guys, this industry, unfortunately, is extremely cutthroat. You know, you don't have to step on anyone for you to shine. Your light, who you are, will overall shine no matter what you do. And listen, if you're not being recognized, that's okay. Can I tell you, you, as long as you recognize your own value, 
that is going to shine through. There's times absolutely like Cindy Key told me, you're gonna be passed up for promotions. But can I tell you that opportunity was right around the corner and I just kept um, you know, preparing myself for next level. Um, and I was always very aggressive with my goals. So if I could say anything is be coachable, support each other, support other women. If you see someone who is, um, you know, challenge or someone reaches out to you and says, hey, you know, I, I need some help. Definitely be that person that they can come to um, right before this call. Uh, if I didn't mention this either, you guys, I have no time, but Freddie Mac decided to uh, make me chair for our Latino employee resource group. Uh, one of my leaders reached out to me and said, Nora, I'm at a career stall. I need you mentor, like reach out to me. And I told her I have a presentation in 15 minutes. I've got five amazing uh, tips for you. I know exactly what you need. Hang tight. So I picked up the phone and she's like, oh my gosh, Nora, you always know what to say. No, it's that I know her so well. I'm like, I know exactly what you need. You need to start documenting all of your successes. You need to see it in writing, put it together and start organizing yourself. So those are all tips for you as well. And can I tell you, if anything, I'm super empathetic to women. They have my heart. I am such a woman supporter. And uh, if I could ever do anything for you guys, please reach out, send me a LinkedIn. I communicate with everybody on LinkedIn because I'm always traveling. Um, reach out to me, you know, if there's anything I can do for you or any, you know, thoughts you have, um, feel free to reach out. And guess what? I'm going to see you all at National for those of you that are in, attending. I can't wait to go. And I'm speaking. Valerie gave me a little slot to, to give you some brand new data and analytics I'm working on. And with that, I conclude because I think we're almost at time up. Exactly. And we do thank you so much. And I did. I really honestly think that you are a wonderful mentor. And I'm excited that I met you. And I, I want to see a whole lot more of you. And I know these girls do too. And I want to tell you, thank you so much. I saw a lot of pretty faces out there today. We had uh, some, I'd say, uh, regulars on like Brandy and Christy, Laura, Chelsea, Catherine, Catalina, Shannon, Tammy, Jilly and uh, Valerie and a lot of other girls. And yes, we want to see them at NAM National. And I am going to tell you the next speaker is actually, I was one, I actually founded this in, it was uh, something way back when uh, I was sitting in my interior decorating business and I just wanted to do more. And I had this idea about high heels and high places, which is where this started. And it became Inspire, a, a women's mentoring group. But next month, I am going to be the, my own guest speaker. And I am going to do taking it to the top. So I wanted to tell y'all that. Don't miss it. And I also, you can go back and you can review all of the uh, guest speakers on uh, www inspirewmg.com and you can also text us and people if you've got uh, things that you want to talk about put it in the text and we'll answer you and I, I know that probably it's been a while back but uh, one of the girls had asked about wanting to have some information on something so the next meeting we did we got a speaker so come on let's do it let's join together let's help mentor each other and i look forward to seeing y'all next month and laura would you like to say something really quick no nope, just want to congratulate nora thank you so much for sharing we love your story we love i mean i saw sema was she was overwhelmed when she heard that story and me too i was getting choked up so thank you for sharing a piece of yourself marty rodriguez she is incredible so the fact that you had the honor of working with her incredible yeah. and the one of the things a couple of things of just takeaways your passion is what is fueling you and i think all of us can you know coincide with the fact that our why and our passion is what's going to fuel us through this recognize in others when you see greatness in someone else tell them and when someone sees greatness in you receive it and accept it because that is something that as women we have a lot of time we have difficulty with accepting it and believing it there is greatness in all of you accept that know that and share that with others 
Thank you all, everyone. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you next month. Bye.